Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian Mounts at RentTurpMechanic.com. Today I want to talk to you about what you can do after you core aerate a lawn. I personally had my lawn core aerated three days ago, and this is a handful of things that I'm going to be doing to it in the next day or two. But there are a handful of other things that you could be doing to your lawn, depending on your situation. I want to talk to you today about some of the more common things that are done to lawns right after aeration. Things that aren't easily done before aeration or any other time during the year. All right, as you can see, I have little holes all over my lawn. I have decided to rake up all of the cores off the ground. I can go around the whole yard and show it to you, but just believe me, it's all over the place. This is the perfect segue into the very first and the most obvious decision that you have to make. After you core aerate the lawn, you have to figure out whether you're going to leave those cores on the ground or pick them up. Now, if you don't want to do anything to your lawn other than to core aerate it, then it is probably best to just leave the cores on the ground. They will slowly assimilate back into the soil system and your lawn will still be aerated and the compaction will be lessened. There's nothing wrong with doing this. The shorter your grass is, the more annoying it is because all of those cores are sitting on top of the grass and they're very noticeable. The longer your grass is, the less noticeable it is. But that choice is up to you whether or not you're going to do any of these other things that are options. In my opinion, after core aerating the lawn, this is the best time in the world to introduce material into your lawn, into the soil system of your lawn that is very difficult to do at other times of the year. This is the second time this year that I core aerated my lawn. The first time was in the spring. The very beginning of spring and I top dressed my lawn after aeration with peat moss for its immediate acidifying effect in the uppermost level of my soil and I top dressed with worm castings. Worm castings are just amazing. It's really hard to quantify their goodness in a couple short sentences. They do so much for the lawn. They do so much for soil systems that it's hard to argue putting anything down other than worm castings. Now, when I applied those things to my lawn back in late March and early April, I push broomed them all in as getting as many of them into the cores, the open cores of my lawn system as possible. This time around, I'm gonna be doing something similar, but I'm gonna be top dressing with something different. Let me show you. All right, over here, I have biochar. I literally have five different biochars. Which one do I prefer? Which one do I recommend? That I have not yet decided upon. So I am putting an article together over on my website where I'm comparing as many of the biochars that could be used in our lawns as possible and kind of giving you information about them along with links to supporting documents from like really like, you know, PhD level uh, research studies that have been put out on biochar. That page is really going to be uh, a work in progress because there's a lot of science behind biochar that I am not capable of delivering to you at this time in video form. But if you go ahead and just, I don't know, head over to Google and just search for Turf Mechanic Biochar, you're going to find the page online and it kind of be a living document where uh, I'm always updating it and kind of uh, expanding the information on it. Because as lawn care enthusiasts, I don't want to just buy any old product. If I'm going to be buying a product and spending the time and energy to apply it to the lawn, I want to make sure that it's probably the best one. So I'm going to be experimenting with that over the next few days. So look for information to come out about that in, the, in future videos and over on the website. But to be brief, the benefits of applying biochar are this. If you can put biochar down into the soil system, it's going to help your lawn retain water and water soluble nutrients because those things get sucked up into the uh, porosity of the biochar substance, substrate, substance, I don't know. It's going to get sucked up into the biochar, which is down in the soil system, and it will hold that water and the nutrients there. Now, there are different kinds of biochars. They're made from different source materials. All of them are going to work slightly different depending Depending on the temperature of paralysis, depending on the, uh, the source material used to create the biochar, depending on the slowness or the fastness of the py pyrolysis. There's a lot of science behind it, but what we get down to as lawn owners is, can I put it on the lawn? Really that's, in my opinion, one of the most important questions to answer. So as I experiment, I'm going to let you know which ones are probably the best product and which ones are probably the easiest to apply to the lawn. And then we're going to marry those two together to figure out which one is probably the best one for us all to be using. I'm going to be using all of them over the next few days in my experiments. Now, 
Biochar is not the only other thing. Top dressing your lawn with all of this stuff isn't the only thing. One of the more common things that people do after they core aerate the lawn is they overseed. So overseeding happens in the fall regularly and core aerating at the end of summer going into fall is one of the best things that you can be doing for your lawn. Your lawn wants to put on new root growth as fall starts. So the core aeration process helps those roots develop a little bit better, a little bit faster. And if we're planting new grass seed, the soil is warm, the air temperatures have cooled off a little bit. It's a perfect environment for new grass seed to start growing and root down well. You can go ahead and apply grass seed to the lawn at an overseeding rate with the cores left on the ground or without. Now, if you remove the cores from the ground, then that makes it a little bit easier to do a lawn leveling job. So if you want to do a lawn leveling job, which is another really common thing to do after core aeration, with those holes opened up, it's a lot easier to just spread sand over the lawn. You'll get some of the sand going down into the holes created in the ground. So they're going to fill up just like if you were top dressing it, but they're still going to stay loose. So you're still going to be able to get root development into those cores easier than any other time during the year. When you level, it's best to level after the grass has been cut particularly short, a lot shorter than you normally do. And that's exactly what we have just done when we core aerated the lawn. Possibly you core aerated the lawn and didn't lower the cut of your grass, but I did. And I recommend just about everyone who's going to be aerating to do that. Because cutting your grass shorter than normal is a little bit of a stressor on the grass, I would prefer to do both of these things at the same time. Also, just before I aerate anyway, I put down a nitrogen-based fertilizer. Really, it's an all-purpose fertilizer, kind of a NPK mix. So we're getting fertilizer into the lawn so it wants to grow. And when you go to do a leveling job, you also want to be heavily fertilizing to push growth so those grass blades can grow up and poke through the material that you're using to level the lawn, whether it be just plain sand or a sandy soil mix or some other product that is special to you. Now, I wouldn't recommend dethatching after core aeration because dethatching the little prongs or a scarifier blades, whatever you're gonna be using, are gonna be cutting ground that has already been damaged by the core aerator. So you're gonna really start ripping things up quite easily. That's why it's best practice to do dethatching before the core aeration. So I here in my yard, I did do a light dethatching before the core aeration. So I'm not gonna be running that now. We want the grass to recover a little bit, root systems to thicken up a little bit, especially if we put grass seed down, we're probably not even gonna want to dethatch for the next couple months or so, because all of those roots are still gonna be delicate, short, and uh, fragile. Now I do recommend keeping your grass short for a little bit. Let's call it a week to 10 days or so after you core aerate because as we put down the top dressing and as we, in my case, I'm going to be push brooming the lawn, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with the push broom and the spreading and the pushing stuff down into the cores when the grass is short. And already, we've already stressed this grass out by cutting it this short. So let's just keep it short and let it kind of recover at this level because later in the season, we can then grow it back out and it's actually gonna be standing on stronger, uh, stronger feet. By scalping it down, going into the aeration and kind of leaving it here, we're kind of training the grass to be a little bit shorter as we go into the fall, which isn't necessarily necessary, but as we train it to be a little bit shorter in the fall, we have a little bit more flexibility in letting the grass grow up and come back down. And then at the end of fall, we have a little bit more flexibility in how long we want to keep the grass before we go into winter dormancy. It's also pretty important to start watering your grass. Now, if we've been going through summer and we've been keeping our grass green, it's going to be easier to keep our lawn wet or moisturized. Let's call it moisturized. Uh, it's going to be easier to keep our lawns moisturized in the fall because there's not as much sunlight in the sky and the sun that's hitting us isn't quite as direct and temperatures aren't quite as high. Evaporation should be lower. But when you poke these cores, especially initially, when you poke these cores, the soil dries out much faster because of the airflow. Now the airflow going down into the cores is the good thing. That's what we want but we also have to understand the risks of doing that. When we poke all of these holes in the ground, 
Ideally, we're talking 24 holes for every square foot. Each one of those holes has the ability to dry out really fast. So we're gonna have to irrigate a little bit more frequently, not that much more frequently, but we wanna irrigate just enough to keep things from drying out. We don't want the roots that are poking out into those holes to dry out and kind of kill off little bits of root systems and grass. Also, whatever it is that you top dress with, if you go ahead like me and push broom and try to get as much of that down into the cores as possible, you're gonna find the whatever the material is, is better suited once it's been watered in. So I'm gonna be push brooming the biochar into the ground. I'm not going to be uh, activating it or priming it or use your word. I'm not gonna be doing anything to it. I'm just putting it down dry. It's gonna slowly assimilate into the soil and kind of prime itself over time. This is the long game. We don't need to be rushing and doing sprints. I'm just gonna put it in the lawn and allow it to work on its own in its own time. But that moisture, once it goes down in there, after the biochar goes down in there, or whatever other material you're putting down in there, is really going to slowly saturate the whole area. We want to keep the ground moist so that these roots can recover, so that our grass can recover from uh, the temporary damage that we just inflicted on it. Now, if you do choose to pick up the cores off of the ground, I do not recommend putting them straight into the trash. Here you see all of the cores that I picked up. I've got a good handful of bags here, of course. Now, only core area at about 2,500 square feet, and that's the material that I was able to gather. That material can come in handy when it comes to lawn leveling, uh, filling in holes, doing projects in the garden. Uh, there are a number of uses for this material. A lot of it is good soil, especially if you take care of your lawn. So throwing it straight in the trash isn't really the best of ideas. There are root systems attached to those cores. There are grass blades attached to those cores. If you have thatch, you have thatch attached to those cores. This is good compost material. So if you get into composting at all ever, this is material that can go into the compost bin and you can reassimilate it and eventually turn it back into just completely usable dirt soil for your lawn and garden. As you can see, after only three days, these cores are bone dry. This is what's happening in your lawn too. So we got, this is another reason, this is another illustration as to why we have to keep the lawn a little bit moisturized while it recovers. Make sure to go down to the description below. I've got a couple other videos, part of this core aeration series. Google me, Turpencanic Biochar. You're gonna find a lot of information on that over the coming weeks uh, and even months, probably even in the next year or two, I'm gonna keep continue working on that document. And make sure to hit that like button if you found this interesting, helpful. In the coming days, I'm gonna be probably Probably. I'm not committed to this. I'll probably be doing a small lawn leveling job here in the lawn. So I hope you stick around and watch that video when it comes out. Thanks for watching.